Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. So after yesterday's RU battle that wasn't, where Bolts and Bombers uh, resigned after losing zero Pokemon, but, you know, ten minutes into the match, um, he wanted a rematch in a tier where I did not bring a stall team. And, you know, that's, I guess, valid, considering I set up the match by saying, RU, don't bring your Uniclus. And that's kind of a dick move as well, because that's like saying, oh, my team is great, except for I can't counter this, this, and this, and this, so bring a team that doesn't have this, this, and this, and this, and I'll be able to destroy you. That's kind of stupid. So, um, anyway, uh, long story short, uh, I chose my most offensive team uh, that I have outside of Little Cup, and I was like, let's do you, you. And he was like, okay, well, that works for me. My, the only Pokemon that I have on this team that's even remotely stally is Umbreon. And, um, you know, that's a support set, and one support set does not a stall team make. So anyway, he leads off with his Hydro Hydrogen. No, Hydragon. Hydragon, okay. Hydragon is the pronunciation that I'm using. And if it's wrong, you people will tell me. And, um, yes, so Hydragon. Um, <laughs> yeah, so in case you're new to this channel, um, I, I have a history of mispronouncing that Pokemon's name, and people criticize me for it in the comments, and it's all good fun, blah blah blah. Anyway, why did I send out my Hugabug here against the Swampert? Uh, the answer is because I it's, it's got Giga Drain, and it's really my only Pokemon that has any kind of grass move. It's, it is my only Pokemon that has any kind of grass move, so Swampert uh, is kind of... The only Pokemon that I have to deal with it is a freaking Galvantula, so that's... This team... Well, actually, so, okay. Um, Blastoise might be able to deal with it, okay, because uh, it's not like he resists water. But, uh, I'm getting, I'm just getting bogged down in the details. I'm not setting up my sticky web here because I see that Crobat and I think he's probably got the defog. So here he's got his Aromatisse out. Uh, I send out my Uchikoma, my um, Metagross, because I'm pretty sure I'll just be able to deal with him. Gets a crit, and that crit was lame, and I am sticking out my tongue at you, Bolts and Bombers, right now. So it's obviously not his fault, it's the game. Um, but so, I go ahead and set up Stealth Rock because I just was pretty sure he would switch out, and it, even though he's got the Defogger most likely, it still gives me a chance to, you know, basically he has to waste a turn defogging now. So, uh, he goes out into the Swampert, and, uh, that means I'm going to probably want to switch out, uh, because I don't really think I can do much to Swampert, and Swampert can easily one-hit KO me with an Earthquake. So I go now out and hug a bug, predicting the Earthquake. Uh, instead, he goes ahead and goes for the Stealth Rock and something. Aha! Uh -huh. So maybe he doesn't have Defog after all. Maybe he's running a really weird offensive Crobat like I am. That would be incredible. Because that means I can set up my Sticky Web, I cripple half of his team, um, and I could potentially do some sweeping. So, I go ahead and go for the Sticky Web on the Switch, because he knows I have Giga Drain at this point. And so, um, he switches out into his quote-unquote stash of pubes, his Aromatis. Uh, I'm... Pubes gets past the the sensor, but uh, Pazuzu does not. No, Pazuzu did. Lamash too did not. Yeah. So uh, censoring the nickname is just so annoying. Um, Game Freak, why did you do? I mean, I understand why you did that, but you just there's no good way to do it because people will find ways to have offensive names. So I go ahead and go out into my Crobat here, and he actually goes ahead and switches out to Swampert. After this battle, I decided that it would that my Crobat really needed to have Giga Drain on its set. So its, it's set is Air Slash, Nasty Plot, um, Heat Wave right now, and uh, Sludge Bomb. And I decided that, uh, so basically without Heat Wave, I'm walled by Steels, and without Giga Drain, I'm walled by Swampert. Um, and I decided that having the recovery with Giga Drain was actually really nice, um, in addition to the fact that it's got 100% accuracy, and honestly, I'm not doing much against Steels anyway. So, actually, that's, I mean, that's not true. I, I can deal with those steals quite well uh, with that set. So, maybe I'll go back. I'm just going back and forth about how about what that fourth move should be. And the answer is that Crobat really suffers from four move slot syndrome, where it really would love that fifth move. So, I get burned by uh, a Scald from that, uh, that Swampert, and that sucks. That really sucks. Um, here, I think I just go for the Giga Drain. And he brings out his Hydrogen, Hydragon. I, it's not hydrogen, it's not the element. Hydragon. He brings out his Hydragon, um, and I'm thinking, okay, well then he must be Scarfed because I outspeed. Still, I leave I leave my uh, Galvantula in just in case he was bluffing the Scarf, and also my health was low enough that I wouldn't have survived another uh, round of Stealth Rock. Oh, crap, I'm missing Stealth Rock on um, my side. Okay, so yeah, that's a flaw in this, uh, this layout. Okay, 
Um, anyway, never mind. I'm not going to go in and edit it because that's just a pain in the ass for nothing. So he has uh, he has rocks up on my side of the field. I'm not showing it in the bottom, and that was a mistake on my part. Um, but it means that Galvantra could not have survived another switch in, so I had to sack it. So now I go out into Blastoise, who is my best shot of dealing with the Swampert, and Sticky Web is up. And I'm going to go ahead and Mega Evolve, and I'm going to go for the incredibly, incredibly gimmicky move of Water Spout. Uh, you know, there's no competitive reason to run Water Spout. I don't think it, you know, it's, it's just, it's awesome, and I love it, but it's, it's really not worth it. And as you can see, it doesn't even one-hit KO the Swampert, even though I'm modest, max, uh, special attack. So he goes ahead and Earth Powers me, or maybe that was an Earthquake, uh, whatever. Point is, he does enough damage that now uh, I'm not going to be using Water Spouts anyway. So I go ahead and go for the Scald. Uh, you notice that neither of those moves is boosted by um, the the ability, um, which I believe, uh, Mega Launcher. Uh, the other two moves I have are, it's I think I have Dark Pulse and Aura Sphere on, as you might No, it's, Dark Pulse is definitely one of them. I think Aura Sphere is the, is the last. Um, anyway, going to go ahead and switch out here because I don't think I can survive a Draco Meteor, but who can survive a Draco Meteor is Mick, my Umbreon, who is specially defensive and uh, should be able to take that hit quite easily. Unfortunately, he went for the U-turn anyway, uh, predicting my switch, so eh, I could have stayed in and what gone for an Aura Sphere against whoever was going to switch out. Um, but yeah, he goes out into his Batman... Sorry. Um, he goes out into his Batman... Uh, and so now here's the point where I will see whether he carries the defog. He's, gonna, he's, uh, he's got the defog, he's going to go for it here. So um, the best move here really would have been to switch out into someone who could actually deal with this Crobat and take advantage of the defog. Uh, I did not do that, and um, so now I've lost both. Uh, so now I've lost my hazards, and I've lost um, my sticky web setter upper. And really, that's only so that's an issue for two Pokemon. That's an issue for. Uh, Lucario, and that's an issue for Victini. Um, those two Pokemon are the Pokemon that I want slow, the other two it doesn't really matter. Um, so I go ahead and go for the Wish, and so at least when I switch out another Pokemon it'll get the Wish recovery. Go ahead and call Mick back, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he's going to uh, have to do. I go out into Maryland, and I think I don't think he can do anything to me, and indeed all he does is go for a U-turn anyway, so I'm going to recover back up to almost full with that Wish. Um, maybe it's not almost full. It's a lot of health. It's a lot of health. That's the bottom line. So he goes ahead and goes out into Victini here. And I'm thinking, so if he is... Well, okay, so uh, he outspeeds, and I, I'm kind of curious whether he's Scarfed or Specs. He goes for the Bolt Strike. I decide to stay in and go for the Scald. And I was thinking that I could survive. Unfortunately, I can't. And yeah, I was really thinking that I could survive a... I could definitely survive a Scarfed one. I don't... Uh, but if he's banded, then I couldn't. So now I know he's, at least I know he's locked in. Um, if Knowing that he's locked in, I maybe should have gone into my own Victini, but I, it's not like I have any super effective moves against it. So, he goes out into his Lucario. I go for the foul play, and that was a bad move, because, you know, he's got Justified. Um, and so now his attack is going to get raised, and I'll, honestly, though, actually, that means that my foul plays are going to be doing more, and the question is whether he's going to close combat me, and the answer is, yeah, he probably is going to close combat me. So I go ahead and withdraw on Brian, um, and go out into Stella Luna, who will 4x resist close combat and should outspeed, and I should be able to take it out with a uh, Heat Wave, or even an Air Slash, probably. So he goes ahead, especially now that his defenses are lowered. So And Lucario is really frail anyway, so um, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, he goes ahead and withdraws Lucario here, knowing that I was going to do one of those moves. And he goes out into his Batman. And if I predict... I actually did predict that. Oh, good, I did. I predicted that. So he, if, he got, if, he'd had, if he predicted that, predicted my prediction and gone for the Ice Punch, or Crunch even there, um, that would have been bad. So now I'm at plus two, and it's time... I, I, unfortunately, I wasted. I was like... I did some calcs, and I realized there's... I couldn't, I couldn't one-shot this Crobat, and so I go out into Uchikoma, and Uchikoma should be able to deal with it, assuming it's the standard set. So he goes for the Brave Bird, I'm like, that's fine, ain't gonna do jack to me. Um, it's resisted, and I'm steel, and uh, Uchikoma is really bulky anyway. Um, by the way, I think Meta Mega Metagross is probably the Mega that I am most excited about in Auras. Um, I, I really cannot wait to use it, and I'm also playing through the demo right now, and I'm like, okay, Steven Stone, you, you said something about, at some point I think I'm going to give you my Metagross, so like, how many of these stupid special missions do I have to do before you give me that Metagross? I know it's coming. Oh, I know it's coming. Uh, so when is it coming? So, uh, yeah, I'm like, I think I've done 11 now, and now they've even stopped counting them, so 
whatever. Okay, so here I really should have gone for Earthquake with printing the switch, but that would have been risky. And all we could have gone into is Hydreigons, and that would have been a thing. So now I'm just not seeing. So he goes for the V Create, and this is okay by me. This is actually this actually will work for me. Um, okay, because I resist it, and now his defenses are lowered, and he should be slower than I am because I think he's banded and I'm banded. Uh, so I'm banded, he's banded, uh, he's at minus one, and so now I think I go for the V-Create because it's the attack that'll do the most damage. Uh, and he goes out into his Aromatisse, and I will see basically how much... Oh no, I go for the U-Turn! Okay, yeah, because U-Turn is at least neutral. Yeah, I didn't think it would... It, not like I thought it would kill, but um, I figured he'd probably switch anyway. So uh, I'm able to go back out into... I go out into Stella Luna, because Stella Luna can set up, and that setting up sweeping is probably my best bet at this point. Um, so the obvious move here is, so he goes ahead and withdraws, and I was predicting that, and that was the move to do, and he goes back out into his, uh, Crobat, and so I go for the Air Slash, and so at least I'll get some damage off on this Crobat, and as you see, it does not even half, maybe a quarter, maybe it's a three-hit KO, but he's got the leftovers, and uh, yeah, it's just not gonna work. So I go ahead and withdraw Stella Luna. And even though it's going to give his Lucario a chance to set up on me, I go out into Mick, my Umbreon. Uh, because really, I just I got no one to take this Crobat. So this battle's not really going my way, unfortunately. He he goes ahead and goes for the Brave Bird. I can take that. That's fine. Um, I actually don't take it as well as I thought I would, because again, I'm specially defensive, not physically defensive. Still, Umbreon's a bulky Pokemon. I would have expected to, do, uh, to take that a little bit better. Um, but, uh, so this is kind of an example, uh, a case in point of why, um, standard Crobat is the standard Crobat and my crazy nasty plot set is not the standard set. Um, so he goes ahead and withdraws. And that's fine. And I'm predicting he's going to go out into Lucario, and he does. He goes out into Luke. And, uh, I'm thinking this is just not good. So I go ahead and go for the Wish. And I can protect and get Myth back to a good range of health. But that's not going to help me out a lot. And I'm thinking, well, if he goes for the close combat, I think that Crobat can survive. And it would be really nice to get Crobat, Crobat back up to nearly full health. I could have also gone out into Victini. That might have been the better move. Unfortunately, he predicts... Uh, so uh, either way, it would have been bad. He goes for the crunch, takes out Stella Luna. That was a very excellent play. And now I've lost my Crobat. And he's just taking damage from Life Orb. And I'm thinking, oh, this is... I think he's going to sweep me now with Lucario. I think this is GG, and he sweeps me with Lucario. Um, but, I go on to Uchikoma, who is slower, but I do have the bullet punch, and I'm just trying to get a little bit of damage off on him, because I'm just hoping that with enough recoil, uh, he will take himself out. So, uh, he goes ahead and goes for the crunch, and Uchikoma is going to go down here, and that sucks, and it is what it is. Um, but Uchikoma goes down, and now I've got two Pokemon that just, so yeah, so I'm gonna have to sack someone, I go out into Mick, and I'm thinking, okay, he's going to close combat me, and that's going to be, well, at least he's going to take out his Lucario. I go ahead and go for Protect, just to get my health a little bit higher, just a little, little bit higher. Um, he goes for the close combat, um, that's obvious, and now I'm thinking, well, maybe he'll mispredict and go for the crunch, thinking I would go out into my Victini, but that would have been stupid of me anyway. He actually withdraws. He withdraws his Lucario, rather than uh, lose it right here. It goes out into his Aromatisse, and here is where this battle gets super long because uh, I don't have anything that can do a lot of damage to him. And I'm especially defensive, so he can't do too much damage to me. Um, and yeah, I guess I should switch out the King. I could switch out Victini right here, but really I want Umbreon's health to get a little bit higher. And um, Moonblast, I mean, unless he has major, major special defense investments. So basically, I got nothing for this Aromatis because Aromatis has tended to be physically defensive. And uh, he's got the Moonblast, so he, this this is GG for me, and really I should have resigned here. But I don't tend to resign. I don't tend to resign matches. And um, because I just can't do anything to this guy. Um, I will put up in the calcs how much V-Crate does, although I think you're just you're going to see it later on in this battle. But um, yeah, so he goes ahead and withdraws here. Uh, decide, I'm not sure why, because he had me. He, uh, he really had me. So he goes out into his Hydreigon. Uh, I know that he is Scarfed, because he outsped my Galvantula, and so it's a little bit of a strange move. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can take a, uh, a Draco Meteor, uh, and I've gone for the Wish. So, um, he goes ahead and used U-Turns out, so really he's just going, I think U-Turn is the only move he's used in this battle with this, um, Hydreigon. So, 
whatever, it gives him some uh, switch initiative. Uh, and now he goes out into his, uh, not switch initiative, but it gives him some momentum. I go for the foul play here, and I'm hoping, so it's not going to take out Crobat. It gets him down pretty low, though, and I guess he can go for the U-turn, but he just, I, he really, his best play is just to keep going for U-turns. Um, yeah, so the nice thing, so he goes for the roost, actually. That was smart. Uh, he goes for the roost, gets his health back back up to a good a good point and really he can stall me out completely i go for the wish and so basically he, at this point he's getting frustrated because i'm like i told you no stall and it's like dude i have one you know you're just as responsible for the stall as i am you know you're using recovery moves as well so um you know my one number on is uh, my team is more offensive than his is so um I'm sounding grumpy about this. I don't think he was quite as hostile as I'm making him out to be, um, but it's just it was it was annoying um, that we got back into a stally battle even after we had determined not to. Uh, I mean, the answer was I should have really resigned here because I had no I had no win condition. Ugh, I hate that term win condition. But I had no win condition at this point. There was no conceivable way that I was getting past his own Matisse, uh, aside from like really really bad misplays. But he's got five Pokemon left. He's got five Pokemon left. Well, okay, now four Pokemon because it was like, no, screw it. I'm not going to stall you out. I just want this match to continue on. So, um, he really he should have U-turned, in my opinion. But, anyway, take out his Crobat, and that is good. And now he's going to go out into Lucario, and my health is not is not 100%. I go ahead and protect to get my health a little bit higher. I don't think I can take a close combat. I don't. But I'm going to try. I'm going to give it the old college try. Uh, and so here I could switch out into Victini, predicting him to go for the close combat again, and I do, but this was really risky because if he'd gone for the crunch, well, so the point is he's got one move left. So with my switches, it's, he could, you know, if he'd gone for the crunch uh, and I left him uh, Mick, he would have been dead as well. Anyway, close combat, holy crap, I don't take that nearly as well as I thought I would, and I'm down to five freaking HP. I'm really glad that he's lost his Stealth Rocker, and he loses his Lucario here. And, um, yeah, and so now it's now not a body bag by any stretch of the imagination. That's nice. So I go ahead and go back out into Umbreon. Uh, I'm pretty sure I wall this Hydra Hydragon, uh, and he goes for the U-turn again. All he's doing is going for U-turns. It's really actually kind of funny. Um, so I've got a problem here, which is that at 5 HP, even a resist, I can't even take a, uh, you know, my Victini can't even take a resisted hit. Uh, so, yeah, it's not a really great situation for me. Uh, uh, this, it hasn't been a great situation for me for the last 10 minutes, let's be honest. So, Nick goes for Protect, get, uh, just to get health a little bit higher. I'm pretty sure I die to a V-Create. He goes for a U-Turn anyway, he locks himself into U-Turn. So, um, good to know, and I figure I can just go for the Wish and get my, and, you know, get my health back up at least. So U-turn, even banded, it doesn't take me out. I survive at 33 HP. Um, it's not stab, that's the bottom line. And U-turn's power isn't that high. Uh, it's only 70. So he goes out into his Hydragon again. And if it's if people are going to say, no, it's pronounced this way. But the point is there is actually very big disagreements about how to pronounce that Pokemon's name. Pokedex 3D, uh, the Pokedex 3D Pro says it one way, and the anime says it another way. And most people are like, well, go by the anime pronunciation. It's like, whatever, whatever, just whatever, folks. Um, so uh, getting my health back up really high, and he really should just go for the V-Create, because it, it'll take me out. And my Victini, it's not like Victini's going to do any better. So I go for the Protect, get my health a little bit higher, and I'm like, and you know, really this match could have been over right here, right now, and he, so he goes for the V-Create. So he's locked himself into V-Create. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking actually, so if I sack my own Victini, then do I outspeed? Because if I outspeed, then I go for the foul play, and I maybe kill him. So, hmm. uh, I will put up in the calcs whether I outspeed. I very much doubt I outspeed because assuming he's, let's assume he's adamant max speed, um, I'll, you know, I, I still think Umbreon zero investment. Also, I'm sassy nature. Don't ask me why sassy nature rather than, oh, I'm sorry. There is a reason why I'm sassy nature. The answer, the reason is payback. Back when I bred this thing in Gen 4, foul play did not exist and payback was the move to use. So here he could have won the match just by going for the V-Create. Instead, he switched out. And he switched out into his stash of pubes, 
who walls me completely, and that's fine. Um, didn't want to screw around with just in case I outsped at, with him at minus one, but I didn't outspeed with him at minus one. There's no freaking way. There's just no way at all. Um, maybe if my st uh, sticky web had been up, that would it would have been a different story. With my sticky web up, man, this batch would have been different. But you know, he had uh, he had the defogger, and that's. That's why people, more people don't use sticky web, because defog is a thing. So I go for the foul play, and at this point I've decided, you know, it's fine. He can just take me out with Moonblast. I'm not going to stall him out. I'm not, I could, I could try PP stalling, but no, I'm not going to do that. Notice, by the way, that actually PP stalling might have been a viable strategy because his Moonblasts are doing less than 50%. I, I'm pretty sure I would have run out of PP for Wishes and, and everything else before he would have run out of Moonblasts. But, um, and it's not, it's just not a road I would have wanted to go down anyway. Um, the Bolts and Bombers won this match fair and square. He won this match just fine. And, um, I hope I'm not being too much of a bad sport here, uh, complaining as I was about, uh, him saying he didn't want stall and us having stall. Um, but yeah, so the point is he won this match. And, uh, so I, but I think I won the RU match. Well, he resigned. So uh, technically I won winning by, winning by a technicality. It's the only match that I've ever won by having fewer Pokemon than my opponent left. But at that point in the match, I had all of my hazards up. Um, and so, and it would have, he would have, I would have been able to stall him out. So anyway, that's the end of the battle. Hope you folks enjoyed it. Uh, tomorrow I'm bringing the last of my live Friday battles for a while. So I hope you folks enjoy that. Comment, rate, subscribe, and challenge. Oh, and next week's going to be fun too, but I won't spoil that. So long, folks.